Hi, Harleen. Oh, hi. <laughs> you know, I, um, that's a, a unique name. I have a cousin named Raylene, Arlene, and Harley. Wow. So right around your name. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I've been uh, doing Meals on Wheels all morning, and uh, now I get to learn about gardening, which I really need some help. My husband uh, planted 18 arborvitaes this weekend for me for Mother's Day. Oh. So I got to know how to take care of them. Are you and I the only one on here? Uh, we have like 39 uh, people signed up. So I'm sure people will start coming on. It's still 10 minutes. Oh, oh yeah, it is. You're right. Huh. Hello. Patricia, how are you? Thank you. Good to see you. I'm kind of early. I didn't know you'd be here already. Yeah, you know, um, I know how the OPC members go, and usually everybody's 15 minutes early, so I always try to uh, to open it up uh, at least 15 minutes before. It's kind of fun talking to everybody before it gets started anyway. I was at a Zoom meeting the other day, and we were, there were about six of us, and we were at the wrong site, and we were waiting for it to start as exercise class for Parkinson's. So oh. I recognized a couple people. So we just had this nice little conversation and found, she was calling the Michigan Parkinson's Foundation and found out that they would changed the address and everything. So none of us got to exercise, but we sure had fun talking. So. Oh, that's fun. You made the best out of it, right? We did. Yeah. Look at your puppy. Oh, you're going to, oh, I thought you were going to show the puppy. I'm going to be on a webinar. Okay, did everybody have a good weekend? Yes. Yeah. Great. I spent the weekend, um, I'm doing a demo for watercolor cards um, that's being posted tomorrow. And then we're going to have the class to do the, the cards on the 27th. And, um, you know, I've been painting like for, you know, 40 years, but I had never like taped myself doing it. And so I literally spent the entire day Saturday and the entire day Sunday just doing the same project over and over because like I wouldn't push the record and with watercolor, like if I miss that whole step, you can't just go back. So I'd have to start all over, <laughs> wow. but I got it done. So I just have to edit a few things and it'll be posted tomorrow. It's a watercolor demo on uh, how to make watercolor cards. I saw it this morning on the OPC website. Yeah, so it'll be posted. The link for the demo will be posted tomorrow. And then the class to do it together will be on the 27th. I think it'll be fun. I'll give you a little sneak preview. This is, uh, this is kind of what they end up looking like. Oh, pretty. Well, that's nice. I did it a few times. <laughs> so it is possible. <laughs> so the demo will be how like how I did it. And then on the 27th, we'll create it together. That'll be fun. So we got a lot of people on here that oh. on, are muted and don't have video, but that's okay. We got Carla. Hi, Carla. And Rod and Ruth and Taru. 
are joining us. I think we have 39 people that registered for the class. And uh, hopefully, uh, I better check my phone to make sure our speaker's not, oh, there she is. Oh, she wants me to add her daughter. I just got that though, because I was doing Meals on Wheels um, this morning. So I just don't have even a second to check my emails. Let me just get there. All right. Each one of these um, links are um, personalized, you know, because you have to register. So I, it's not like you can just share the code with somebody. You have to literally um, get their information. Okay, this is Kate. I have as many as they used to. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it said something about <clears throat> the people who are most likely to, uh, something, you know, where I took that the older people don't have to go to math. But I'm going to go to math. And, you know, I'm scheduled to read it back, you know. <clears throat> Hope I get my voice back. <laughs> Well, I would I would take it slowly. I don't I don't know that I would rush back. See what see what's going to happen. Because, you know, this area we might be a little more protected. I you know I don't know how bad it is here. I haven't heard specific numbers. Well, Macomb actually Oakland has more coronavirus than Macomb, but I think that's because Pontiac isn't that part of Oakland. Uh, Pontiac is in Oakland. The I the other thing is though, Betty, a lot of people were traveling overseas and that's affluent people. So Oakland uh -huh. County would be the people who were traveling over there who might have come in from yeah. your business people I mean, and Detroit is first, of course. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you can't assume that just because the Pontiac is a poor place that they would be more likely to have it. I think it's that's well, probably like not true. That they're living closer together than the poor, you know because it's an old fair. Well, yeah, because they have to work. They, they can't afford to sit home. So a lot of them are. Oh, really? Hmm. I, well, the other thing is, too, um, black families are larger, so people are coming home and maybe they're bringing it back to their families. Yeah, yeah. I had number one when I go to a client's house especially for the first time and I say hey you know what would you like the absolute first thing they say is low maintenance naturally nobody wants a high maintenance plant nobody wants to do extra work that you know that's that's just kind of a given I also threw in things like reliable foliage which we'll talk about I've got plants that I think are really neat um, with uh, foliage that way um, also long blooming seasons. There's a lot of plants that give you flowers, but maybe not as long as you wanted them to. 
Um, and they're always hybridizing and coming up with new cultivars every day. So we can also, um, you know, watch that as well for what's out there. Fragrance, some of the plants that I've got today will have, um, that offer fragrance as well. Um, so these are the first ones that I've got. And um, these are plants that I put them in categories so you could kind of see height, but you could make your notes. Some are for shady spots, some are for sunny spots. Um, but so I put them under foliage plants first that are under 12 inches that you may or may not um, be familiar with. This first one is dwarf's goat beard. And dwarf's goat's beard is a true dwarf. It is a really cool plant. That picture that you see on the left side, that's in my garden. I have had that probably, I would say at least 15 years and it's never, got, never gotten any bigger than that. It just stays small. It's maybe 12 inches. Um, it's a real small plant, very reliable and it gives you a right, really nice texture. Um, the one on the right of that, Misty Lace, is a little bit taller. It goes over the 12 inch mark, but I just wanted to show you that one. Um, and there's a giant goat's beard that gets about four feet. Misty, Misty Lace gets about um, two feet, something like that. It's the thing about these, these are great for a partial shade area because people like, you know, you have different areas. It'll even do very shady spots and still give you some color and some um, highlights there. So that's goat's beard. Um, this one is European wild ginger. Has anybody used this plant? Had it before? It, um, it's, it's one that I think is great because um, it's got, see, obvious you can see, it's got that glossy, shiny green leaf to it. It's a very, very, very slow grower. So don't expect, if you're buying one, don't accept, it to spread fast. Um, I've got it in my mom's in a very more of a sandy soil, but it'll handle sandy, it'll handle clay. Um, but what's neat about it is the glossy green leaf. It also does have like a little maroon flower um, underneath the leaves, but it's only um, at uh, what in the springtime when it blooms, and you don't really see them because they're underneath the plant most of the time. So cool plant, nice one for. Uh, you know, like maybe a, an accent with a hosta or something like that. So um, these are, um, this one, next one, this is Apomidium. One of the people asked a question about uh, plants that like drier shade or drier areas. Baron wart is the one that handles sandy, or I'm sorry, shady areas, and it'll handle dry soils. With that being said, though, I would tell you that don't, you still that first, especially that first year, you have to water those plants and make sure they keep getting watered so the roots get established so that they're strong enough to handle a shadier spot. So in a drier spot, a lot of people just put it in the ground, walk away and figure, hey, it'll handle dry shade. And that's not, that's not the case with any plant. Any plant that you see that says that, um, you know, that it'll handle dry areas, remember you got to water. Think when you're thinking that because you're still going to have to do that. Um, Baron wart is a really cool one also called Bishop's Hat. Um, nice flower in the springtime. Um, this one I think really really cool and I don't think many people use this at all. I love this plant. This is in my front yard in between two rocks and now it's kind of covered those rocks. This was two years ago. This is called Veronica Water Peri Blue. Um, and it gets these blue flowers in the springtime, hasn't started yet. Um, it will get, um, it, it has like a glossy green leaf to it. Um, and so, um, and then it's got like red tinges and especially in the spring and the fall, it is a really, really, it's a fun plant. It's a really cool one. Um, I had a client who, okay, it's a deer, I got to remember deer to tell you about deer too, because most people don't have deer issues, um, but it's very deer tolerant. Um, they don't bother it. I had it at a client's house where she's got heavy slopes and we put this along the slope to kind of establish um, an erosion control type thing. We had to put a lot in, but they did great, give you that spring bloom, but then through the rest of the season, they've just got those red tinges on the green leaves and it's a it's a nice fine textured plant. So good one to try. 
Um, and then another one that, another Veronica that I like, I was hesitant to put it in the talk. Um, I got this probably four years ago and now it's starting to be more available. It wasn't available before um, and now it is. So um, it's, um, it's, it's doing great that way. It's got the gold leaves to it. I found it's, while it says full sun, watch when, when they say full sun things, a lot of times, especially variegated leaves or leaves with gold colors, they actually do better if they have some gold tones to, or if they have a partial shady spot where they're not getting that full sun from the south all day long. They might do okay, but they're not gonna thrive. So they'll survive, they'll be fine, and it did what it was supposed to do when it's what it said in the catalog. But if you put it like in an area, I've got mine in full sun, but it also um, gets shade from a tree like on the west side later on, and that makes it perfect. It really shines that way. So neat plant. So those are guys that are in her plants. Um, these are the reliable foliage plants for little bit taller ones. Um, Baby Tut, a lot of people have started, that's the green leaf one in this picture. This picture is in uh, downtown uh, Frankenmuth. And we actually talked to um, the director over at Frankenmuth, actually the person who was responsible for all the plants there. Um, and he's, we've become, you know, good friends and stuff. And um, he was one of the originators. He, he trials all the plants over at Frankenmuth Insurance. Um, and then he goes from there um, and, and works with the diff, then puts them into the city. The city will adapt those later. Baby Tut um, is one supposed to be one to two feet. If it's got enough moisture and it's happy, it'll probably even get a little bit bigger than that. They also have Prince Tut that gets taller, that's probably two to three foot. And then they've got um, King Tut. Uh, which is going to get four to six feet. So it's really huge. So if you need something that's a decent size, I would say try Baby Tut because you'll get that nice texture. No flowers with this, but look how it accents the green, um, the dark burgundy um, elephant ears there. So um, it's a good foil for different plants that way. Nice texture, a cool one to work with. That's an annual. Uh, all the ones I've shown you till this time were all perennials. So that's an annual. So that may, might help you with that too. Um, let me see. Next one is Sea Heart Bernera. Uh, this is also perennial forget-me-not. And this one, I, I hope a lot of people have used this. Um, this is another one that'll tolerate dry shade once it gets established. Um, it, it's also called Bernera. It's called Alconet. It's called perennial forget-me-not. Um, really neat plant as far as it gets those uh, those um, flowers in the springtime um, and does really well that way but it gives you that foliage the whole year um, well the whole season it's a perennial so from it's coming up now it's probably about uh, three quarters of the way up um, and then it's there until we cut it back in October and November um, Jack Frost was one of the original really good ones of this one, but now um, Jack, uh, Jack has kind of been superseded by Seahart. A lot of companies are selling Seahart because it's just got a little bit thicker leaf, same variegation, but thicker leaf and a little bit stronger even. Um, no tr trouble with slugs things like that. So, you know, in a shady garden, partial shady garden, this one, if it's in full sun, it'll droop. It, 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 or it needs water, especially in a sandier soil. So I like to give it a break. I think it's better in a partial shade. And you can see how it lightens up, just brightens up a shady spot. So it's, um, it's great that way. So, um, uh, so that's Sea Heart. And let me see. And now this is an annual, but I had to throw this in. There's a lot of really cool um, annuals to put in here as well. Um, I like this one, this burger, and you can get it at different places. I haven't really talked about you know places to go. I don't really go to big box stores to buy my stuff. 
I usually go to all the local places. Um, I like Telly's. Um, love going to Telly's on both uh, Shelby and also in Troy. Um, he has this here. For 14 and a half. Eckert's the big bar, brown barn there. Um, and so uh, that one's a great one. Um, but this place, this, this ornamental pepper is awesome. You can see on the left side how I just put it in a pot. Now, you know, a lot of times when I go to somebody's house and they say, oh, I like my plants, but there's just something wrong with them. And you might even think about this yourself. Most of the time, it's because they have the same color green foliage throughout most of it. And most of the time, they have the same textures. And this is one that's really awesome because with that dark black color to it, it really stands out and makes things pop all around it. Um, the berries that it have start out as black, and then as it matures and ages, they turn red. They are edible, but I wouldn't do it because they're, from what I understand, they're pretty hot. So I think I would just leave that alone and get ones that you're more familiar with. So that's ornamental pepper. Um, very heat tolerant. Water, it's not, you know, it doesn't need tons of water. Just, just a very reliable, no bugs, no issues with it. Um, then, you know, naturally the coleus, I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing that uh, there's, there's tons of different coleus. You can buy them seed grown, which means those are usually how you can tell the difference is because they're in flats. So you'll get more for your money in a flat. But if you buy the individual ones, like say the $3 ones or the $4 ones like this one, Lime Sizzler, on the left, I got that from Telly's. Sedona, I did too, but they have them everywhere. When they're four, three dollars a pot, four dollars a pot, that means that they're more sun tolerant, typically. So you can use the color. So you can add the colors throughout, you know, and um, they're great. We use them in tons of places because they really make them stand out. So if you've got the um, those colors, they, you know, it's like you're substituting for a hosta but you know again they're annuals so hope that's hope that's making sense so far to everybody um i think of all the geraniums this one is the absolute best one and uh i what i did is i bought a couple of them i get them for my mom every year and so this one bring it into the picture here this is this is the calliope dark red, and I want you to see it. Um, it is awesome plant. Um, and one of the things I want you to remember when you're, if you have the dead head of, of geranium, I hope you can see this, but you're going down to the base of that uh, stem and you just snap it off right at the base and take the whole stem out. Don't, um, don't snip, don't, sorry about this, don't snip it, but take the whole stem all the way back to the base. That way it sends out new flowers. Um, now's my time for my little bit personal thing here that luckily my mom's not on this one, but my mom is not the greatest at watering plants and, and she's not great at fertilizing. This calliope is absolutely perfect for her. We've got two of them at her house. They're facing full sun, they're in pots, we, she waters them every day, hopefully, or every other day, and they are just absolutely great. They, it, they bloom, bloom, bloom all summer, and you never have to, you deadhead them, but that's about it. All you do is go in at the base, snap them off, and I don't, of all the geraniums, I don't think you will get a better one than the Calliope Dark Red. So that's like my star favorite for today. Well, they all are, but that's a really, really good one, so. Hope you like it. Yes. Um, the 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 Hakonicloa or Hakonicloa, uh, a lot of people are using this one now. A great one. Um, it you can see it on the on the left picture. It's obviously the one in front. It's kind of a slow grower. Um, it mostly comes in the aurea, which is the green and gold. Great for a partial shade 
Um, it can go in full shade, but it won't have as bright a gold color to it. There's a variety called gold, all gold that is great. There's another one that was introduced from Canada called Solar Flare, which is pretty cool because it's got just kind of like a solar flare with sound. It's gold on the edges, but in the center of the plant has like reddish flares coming out to it. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really nice plant. Uh, we're using these a lot. I only use them in partial shade. We took over for a client that um, we're doing the maintenance at their house and the, the landscaper that put plants in before that put these in full sun. Um, they're getting a lot of water over there and they're doing fine. So I think if you, they would do okay in full sun if they had a little bit more water. So um, it'll, it'd be a really neat one to try. These are great. They're just a, you know, they're just like a really good background of a shady garden. So, um, the coral bells, a lot of people are familiar with coral bells. I'm going to give you a couple of different things about coral bells just to kind of clue you in a little bit even more. Sometimes people have trouble with them. Number one, they don't like a heavy clay soil. So um, if make sure that you've got good drainage for them. A lot of times after winter, you'll see them kind of pop up out of the soil. You can just kind of push them back down, get them back in there. Um, they don't like a ton of water on them. They, you can get kind of root rot with that. Um, and they definitely don't like if you've got like um, if snow sits on them or anything else like that, that they're, that it's sitting on them for the winter time, they will come out of the winter not very happy if it's too much snow. I mean, if it's a little snow, that's fine. But what I'm saying is don't put it next to your driveway and then have the snow piling on top of it. You got two feet or whatever, because it's not going to be happy that way. Um, there are the best varieties are called the, their heuchera is the, botanical name, but then it's Velosa. It's the Velosa series. It's V-I-L-L-O-S-A. Um, there's some really neat ones. The Velosas handle the heat and dry and everything else probably the best. Um, there's ones that very timeless, blooms the whole summer. This one here that I've got is Snowstorm. Um, very timeless, lasts the whole summer as far as the flowers go. Oh, and then the other thing is, is that the um, hummingbirds love it. Even though it's a small flowers, hummingbirds go crazy over this one. So that, that's a good one for you too. Um, really neat, nice plant, good one. Um, I would say partial shade is still where it's going to do best. They say full sun, they'll do fine in full sun, but I think partial shade, when they get a break, they'll do even better. But it got to put some fountain grasses in there or different grasses. This is the only grass I'm going to show you. Um, this is, remember when you're looking at grasses, there's warm season grasses and cool season gra grasses. So when you've got warm season grasses, um, they um, are more that um, they are not going to really get going and start growing until the soil warms up. <laughs> As you saw last night, hey, Linda Martins, how are you? <laughs> um, uh, as you saw last night, we still have a lot of snow and everything else going, so we do not have warm soils. So um, they're just sitting there. They're not doing a thing. The nice part about these is it's not a real big one. Just cut it down to the ground in the fall or in the spring, and that's all you have to do with it. So very, 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 very low maintenance plant that way. Um, and I had to put this one in. Here's the story. This is Swiss chard bright light. So here's a vegetable. I have a client who came to me one day and she said, well, she said, I talked to my daughter-in-law and my daughter-in-law said that you put vegetables in my flower pots. And she was all upset. And I said, why, yes, I did. <laughs> and she's like, well, what'd you do that for? I said, do you know what, veg where, what the vegetable is? She said, no, I just know there's one in my flower pot. So I said, come on out and look at it. And Bright Lights is right in the center there. And Bright Lights, I think, is an awesome plant. Now, the only thing I'm going to tell you right away is we put these in pots and we have them, the pots are 
upright. I mean, not upright, but maybe they're two feet off the ground, three feet off the ground, because uh, rabbits like Swiss chard. So if you've got like bunny issues, you want to watch out for that. Um, but look at the bright red stems. We had geraniums in there. Um, we have a banana plant in the back. The geraniums, the bright red stems, it, it, this plant, would you buy it? If you go to buy it, you can get it in seed. Or if you go to buy it, you can get a six pack. And when you get a six pack of it, what you'll get is one red, one orange, one pink, one yellow. They, it comes in all different stems. And then you just plant them all around. Um, and then, but that's what you get. It just keeps growing bigger. The one on the left is when I bought it. Maybe it was a couple weeks old. The one on the right is in probably mid-July. So that gives you an idea. But just a great, look at that coarse texture, great accent, and you can't beat it. It's a really, really good one. So I had to, had to put that in there. So that's Swiss chard, bright light. All of these are available every place. So you don't have to worry about, you know, that, and if you can't find it, I will tell you where you can find it. So that's Swiss chard. Now these guys are the ones that are a little bit uh, bigger, taller. Got deer issues, here you go. Sun King Aurelia, partial shade, shady spot. The shadier go, the less gold it'll be. But partial shade and even shade, it's this, this part of the side of the house um, got a, got a couple hours this is almost north side so it might get a couple hours of sunlight so it doesn't get much sun king aurelia is like the king out there right now great great plant for shady spots like i said deer don't bother it um it gets those like white flowers on it really knock on wood no issues uh great in a combination with um coral bells if you want um, but a real, really good one. So I'm trying to give you a variety of lots of different things, deer issues, everything else. Um, here's my best of the best as far as cordylines go. I have tried a lot of different ones. We have a condominium complex in Royal Oak and there was big trees in there and we couldn't plant flowers. So we put real tall pots underneath crab apple trees. And uh, the crab apples are trimmed up pretty high and the pots are about, well, this, get, this gets about in the pot, it's probably about four feet tall total. Um, this this uh, Florica was the best of all of them. I tried and I got, I got that at, at Bordines. Um, you can only get it like right at the beginning of the season, um, but uh, because they kind of sell out fast, but I've tried different varieties and they weren't as strong, thick of leaves um, and as bright of colors. So for those, for a thick leaf plant, this is a really, really good one. So I, I'm very, very happy with that one. Um, some people ask about native plants and I wanted to toss those in as well. This is at my mom's house on the side of her garage there. And this is Penstemon uh, Midnight Masquerade. This guy, these bloom in, in June. Um, combinations, if you want to put these with a combination with something else, they work very well with like the cat mint, the nepeta plants. They work really well with that. There's also dark towers um, as well, but this is Midnight Masquerade. Very well behaved plant. Pollinators go to it as well. Um, after it's all done flowering, I just usually just cut off the flower tops and as you can see, you still have a great a foliage to it. So really neat that way. How's everybody doing? Y'all relax? Y'all happy? You get to sit back, have the drink, you know, just, just enjoy it. <laughs> You're doing outside. a great job, Sue. We have a couple okay, questions, sure. if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, that'd be great. So you've been answering them as we go. Um, but one that I think just, uh, was just recent are... Are the Aurelias annual or perennials? Oh, sorry about that. They are they are perennials. Um, on your handout, um, if it says A, it means annual. If there's nothing next to it, then it's assume it's a perennial. So sorry about that. But yeah, I got an A, a star, a star and A, and that means that's an annual. So, okay. but the Aurelias are perennial. And then while I have you stopped, I'm just going to ask you, I think one more question that came up that I'm not sure you answered yet is what hostas can I plant 
uh, that the deer won't eat? <laughs> Good luck. Um, there's not, there, there's not, there's the only one that I have seen that the deer haven't bothered. Deer love, I'll tell you, let's, let's just start right from the beginning. Deer love hostas regardless. Deer love a lot of plants. They like daylilies, there's a bunch of them. And, and even if, a, if, if you see something that says it's deer resistant, they might steer, still nibble on it initially because especially the babies don't know that they don't like it yet. But of all of them, there is one that's called Great Expectations. And if you're looking for one that could be not, I'm not gonna say deer resistant, but of all of them that will hand, tolerate deer the best or deer don't bother it, Great Expectations would probably be it. That's the only plant that I know of that I have seen in real life that has actually worked. So that's my answer to you. I would go with, I would definitely, you know, if I could, I would switch over to a lot of the other plants, like, you know, use the aralias or things like that, because you're going to get um, definitely more value that way. So. Hey, that's good knowledge. Continue. Okay. Thank you so good much. Good questions? Yeah, okay. really good questions. I, I like that with the just pop it in every once in a while. That's great. Okay, excellent. Okay, all right. All right, so that's the that's uh, penstemon. So this is a native plant. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that is a native as well. So blooms in June. Very now the reason I like the dark towers or the midnight masquerade is because the stems are a lot stronger. So that's uh, why we're going with these. The flowers stand up and are much stronger than um, other. Like Husker red penstemon is a good one, but these guys are even better. So um, this one is an annual. Uh, I use this in a lot of pots, in pots uh, that are like farther away in the back of the yard and you want things to stand out. This is called Golden Edge. Now, I will tell you immediately on your handout, it has it, but it says watch out for hidden thorns. It will have thorns as the plant gets older and big. This, with this size, you'll start to see it. Um, you'll find them in there. They're not a big deal because you never have to do anything with this plant. It doesn't have flowers, just the foliage. Um, but it's but there's um, but I I love it. I uh, we plant uh, this one and we'll put like red salvia, tall red salvia around it. We'll put um, red geraniums around it. Um, that that variegated green and yellow with the red just stands out huge for different things. So. Good plant, you don't see it that much. I get it at Tellys. Um, I don't know if I don't know if other places have it, but I know Tellys has it. So um, good, good plant that way. Um, banana plant. I had to put one of these in. Now you can buy a banana plant for fifty bucks, or I I get my best prices usually at farmers market for like 15 bucks and they're smaller, but they take off and they grow quick. Um, tropical, if you want to add a tropical feel, but I would say it can be full sun. Your biggest thing with this one is make sure it's not in a really, really windy site. If it's very windy, sometimes the leaves will rip a little. It doesn't stop the plant. It's not a problem that way, um, but you will kind of get, you know how you see these plants, they look like perfect. These are in spots where they're more protected and they're very, very happy. Um, so it'll get tall. You can overwinter it. You can cut it back. You can put it in your basement, bring it back out in the spring, and it'll take off and get on you. There, that's kind of a whole different class on that, on how to do it. Not that big of a deal. Not a big problem, but neat plant. Something that nobody else has in their backyard, this would be it. Um, Persian Shield, another one, I would say it needs a break from full sun, even though they say full sun. Um, I like the silver in it, the silver, silver with the pinkish purplish um, and that sheen really stands out. Um, I would say when you get it, like, and say like it's a foot tall, maybe a foot tall, make sure you kind of pinch the tips on it and that way you get a fuller, bushier plant like this one is. Um, so this is an annual, again, Persian Shield, the Strobilanthus is the botanical name, but it is a nice accent. You, it, it shows off other plants around it. Um, blue oak grass, here's another one here that I wanted to put in. 
And um, that one is, I'm gonna turn my, my tree a little bit so you get better. Oh, that's not helping. I thought it would be better. Um, blue oak grass gets about three feet eventually. Very good plant. Now it's an evergreen. So it's their winter, spring, summer, fall perennial. However, if it comes out of the winter, really crappy looking, best way to describe it, doesn't look that great, too brown, different things, then go ahead and just trim it down to about, you know, a couple inches tall, just at the, above the crown. Just cut it all down now. Now would be the only time you would do that. And because it's been dormant and it's sitting there, its roots are ready to go and it'll send up all brand new um, leaves to it and it'll, it'll look great. It'll look just like this in a couple of weeks. So um, that's blue oak grass. Um, this is a clump grass. You can see it's one big clump. Be wary if you see, look at plants and they say they're runners. If you've got plants that are running and they're spreading along the base, you might have a lot more issues with them later. Like blue lime grass, never, never, never put by a loom blue lime grass unless you've got like a big hillside and you can just let it go. So um, shady spots, here's, um, Rocket ligularia, and then there's a smaller version that's called bottle rocket. That's um, not as tall. It gets about maybe ah, probably 30 inches. 30. They say 28 to 34. I'm going to say 30 inches. Um, bottle rack rocket doesn't wilt as much or doesn't flop. The rocket will in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day, its leaves will will wilt and fall down and stuff. Then it brightens back up later on, five o'clock, six o'clock. Don't worry about it. You can water it, but it just does that every day. Bottle Rocket is a little bit stronger. Um, and these guys are both shade, like if you want a um, deer resistant, uh, a substitute for hostas, this would be another good one. Plus you get the flower color to it. And the slugs don't really bother it either. So um, this is an annual, but we use this one. This is fireworks. Um, there's uh, purple fountain grass as well, but this is fireworks that stays a little bit shorter. I use this on a lot of projects. Um, we're going to be using this um, over on Van Dyke. We're, you'll see it on Van Dyke around 26 mile. Um, we've got different en uh, entrances to subdivisions, and I love it because it's an, a nice accent. You don't worry about them. You don't have to worry about water. You know, they, you do water them, but once they get established, they're just great and they just show off the rest of the plant. Put, put sweet potato vine underneath this. Let sweet potato vine with the chartreuse leaves kind of go underneath and this on top. And you can see that from a half a mile away. And it's a nice accent, fine texture versus a very coarse texture. So, um, so that's, that's great and easy. Um, this Russian sage, the blue one. This picture is over at Chicago Botanic Gardens. If you ever get a chance to go there, go there. Um, but the Russian, Russian sage is um, very aromatic. Um, deer don't bother it. Um, you just basically leave it alone. Right now, you just kind of trim off any little, don't trim it down to the ground if you don't have to. Just do very little trimming with it. Um, there is a newer variety called denim and lace. Some, sometimes this one, Russian sage, and it's mostly just because of the soils, will kind of flop, and people will notice that, that they'll just kind of flop one way or the other. Denim and lace doesn't flop. It's shorter. It only gets about 30 inches. Um, we've used it for the last couple of years, and I'm very happy with it. These guys like full sun. As you can see, that's in a combination with purple coneflowers. You want to invite butterflies to a garden? Go for it because that's that's a great that's a great garden for butterflies right there. Now I'm going to take you shady people back into shade stuff. Um, Solomon Seal. I hope I hope some of you have this. That picture on the left um, could have been from yesterday. It was last year. I mean, it could have been from a couple days ago because this is the exact time that this is all coming up. The ferns are up. The Solomon Seal is right in the middle. That um, Ligularia um, behind is that burgundy leaf is behind there popping up, and then you see the trillium, the white little flower, white flowers in the bottom. The awesome thing about Solomon Seal, it is kind of a runner. It spreads the botanical name Polygonatum actually means um, 
Gonu means knees, K-N-E-E-S, and Pali means many. And so that's how the root system spreads. Um, and But it's easy to pull up if you don't need that many, if it's spreading in a different area. This is um, the variegated version, which I like the best because it's got those white tips to it. It has white flowers. It's supposed to be fragrant. I've never really, I laid underneath this plant, didn't smell a fragrance. So maybe there's a little bit, but it's nothing spectacular. Um, really, really cool for dry shade, anything like that. That's, um, it works very good um, that way. So good plant for um, just that horizontal habit in a shade garden. You need something special. That one's going to be it. So. Um, now we're going to get into flowers. I know you've been waiting for these, so let's go to flowers and have some fun um, and hopefully long blooming flowers. Now this is Serbian bellflower. These are guys that are maybe 12 inches or lower. I didn't put on your handout and I'd like to ask you to add to it I, because I, when I did this, the best one that I found is blue waterfall. And I think, and that's very, very available is blue waterfowl in the Serbian bellflower. Um, really cool plant. It says rapid spreader. Um, I, I guess rapid is all in, you know, a state of mind of how really it is, but it does spread at a good pace. Um, likes a well-drained soil. Great, great plant. Blooms from like, say, June to August. I mean, it's a long blooming plant. Um, we did kind of get down there one time and deadheaded a little, but it's too low to deadhead, just kind of leave it alone and it'll just keep giving you flowers. So nice plant that way. Um, bumbago for a different color of blue because you don't get too many plants. Again, this is perennials. Um, this one is a ground cover you put in there and it's um, that, that bottom picture on the right is the fall color to it. Um, it's, uh, so it does get red tinges green leaves, red tinges, blooms and probably like around um, June, late, probably mid-June and just kind of mid-June through August. So it's got a good um, bloom time, but then after it's done blooming, it's still kind of blooming and then the flowers start, or the leaves start to turn red. Um, and it's variable. Some, some years it's better than others. Some years we get a great red fall color, some years not as much, so it just kind of depends, but it is a really cool plant. So it's a good ground cover to try. Um, di dianthus, there's a million dianthus out there. Um, and when you go to look at them, sniff them, smell them, check them out, see how you like them. Rabbits will get to them sometimes. Um, rabbits will like them, but they don't, uh, well, they could overtake them. We don't usually have that. I don't have that many rabbits around one or two, so they bother it a little, but not to any big extent. Um, the nice part about this one is you don't have to deadhead it. The flowers just kind of shrivel up, um, and so there's like no he deadheading involved with this one. Um, it doesn't, all the dianthus don't like a real heavy clay soil or a wet soil. So if you're working with a dianthus um, and you're not happy with it, it's not doing well, dig it up, move it, put it someplace else because it might do better in a, in a better drained soil location. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Luckily, my husband's home to answer phone calls. <laughs> um, um, Zing Rose is another one. Um, I just put this in here for a shorter one. Um, it's still available, maybe more by catalogs than at the, you, you never know. They might have it this year. You just never know when they have it or when they don't. But Zing Rose is another, um, just a really cool, there's a lot of dianthus out there. Um, we got the Tropical Punch series this past year. So I'm playing with that one. I'll let you know, stay tuned and I'll give you the results after a year or two and see how those guys work. So. Annuals, back to annuals for long blooming sh partial shade area. Um, this is cup flower, Nuremburgia, and mostly it's just whites and blues, uh, the flower colors um, in their st star shape. You can get them in like big hanging baskets, just filled, um, and just a good one. It's a, it's a fun plant, partial shade. 
you want something to brighten up an area, you know, when everything was going on with impatience and all them all dying back, um, they, you know, these, these were at least ones that kind of stepped up and brightened areas out too. Now impatience are coming back. Um, there's some newer varieties out there, so we'll see how they do. Um, if you want an extremely reliable full sun, flower all summer, butterflies, on the left you can see that is a clear wing um, hawk moth butter or hawk moth there. You can see the kind of the clear wing. Um, he's in the middle of that plant. This plant is a native to Florida. It likes the heat. It tell it, and what that means is, don't forget what that means whenever you hear that, like I'm going to tell you with vincas in a little bit too. They like hot soil, they'll like warmer soils. So if you plant them when it's too early, you go out and we get, well, what? It's supposed to be in the 70s at the end of the week. Yay. <laughs> um, when, when it gets warm like that, everybody jumps up, jumps the gun and starts planting. Well, don't forget the soil is still cold. So you plant a plant in so cold, wet soil, it's going to sit there and not do anything. Pentis for butterflies, awesome plant, um, great one to use. Uh, and I can't say enough about it. Just a really great, uh, comes in pink, white, uh, pink, white, and, and like this red or a fuchsia type. And great, and great plant. Another great one for me, especially when, because we have so many clients that we're doing mass plantings, like in front of, you know, subdivisions and different things like that. This Xenia Profusion, these guys are shorter. They maybe max out at the end of the season at like maybe um, taller than 12, maybe maybe 15 inches, something like that, uh, maybe even a little bit taller than that. But Profusion or Zahara, they're almost kind of interchangeable. Um, Zahara gives bigger flowers less. Profusion gives more flowers, but smaller. Um, but either one of those, they come, I have found the colors you're seeing, the yellow and the orange, I think they're be are the best. And there's a red also. There's like a pink out there. He's not as reliable. There's one that's a pink, pink and white. It's a stardust one. Um, that one didn't do as well. It wasn't, and, and the other thing is these guys seem to do better in soil than they do in pots. So that's another, another thing on that is plant them in the soil and you are much better, um, much better off. So um, good, but both of those great full sun annual plants. Uh, and now we're going to taller ones. Here's the annual vinca that I was just talking about. Um, that one also, um, it is one that you are um, going to uh, do a um, wait for the soil to warm up. They come usually, they call them, there's some that they call it grape. It's not a grape color. It's, it's a pinkish, bluish. It's not like, so that mostly it comes in pinks, whites, and reds, um, either like with the white star centers or the pink star centers. Annual vinca is an awesome plant. It's um, clean green leaves. Um, you don't have to deadhead it. You want something for full sun, gives you flowers all summer. Plant it, fertilize it. You're happy. I'm fertilizing probably once or, um, I. well, we do a whole thing with fertilizing annuals. We usually fertilize them when we plant them. We, we, we prepare the soil. Um, we'll use like a bumper crop uh, compost mix into the soil, and then we'll um, also fertilize them with, um, well, I use Hollytone for all, for all my annuals and perennials, in, especially in pots. We, we use Hollytone, and that's kind of a slow release fertilizer, and then we also supplement it with like a, a Peter's uh, liquid fertilizer or something like that, like maybe once every three weeks, especially in the summertime um, when it gets, when it really heats up because you're watering more and you're pushing that fertilizer through the soil. So by July, that holly tone that you put down is gone. Or if you use Osmocote or anything, those guys are gone in July. So you need to supplement that again with like another slow release, like a holly tone or an Osmocote or something. 
and then also put a um, and then keep say every two to three weeks do a liquid fertilizer as well. That should help. Vincas are awesome. This one is one of my favorites. It's the first plant that I ever saw hummingbirds come to in my backyard. This is Agastache Desert Sunrise. Now I'm going to give you a little thing right here on this is that Desert Sunrise isn't really available as much unless you go online and um, highcountrygardens.com H I G A high it's all one word highcountrygardens.com they have it but the new one that's out there that is doing very very well is Rosie Posey and I should I just don't have pictures of it I I don't know why I walk by it all the time I love it and I don't have good pictures so that's why I got the pictures of Desert Sunrise which is awesome too I love this one um, but Rosie Posey you'll be able to are more available there is also mango tango. I will tell you of rosy posy and mango tango. I would get rosy posy. Uh, mango tango kind of like didn't do well by the end of the season. These are both they're perennials, um, but uh, rosy posy and desert sunrise are probably my absolute favorite. So that's a perennial. Um, the fragrance on this. This is awesome. You rub your hands on the plant, or you put it in an area where you brush by it. And to me, it smells like root beer. Some people say it's got a real citrusy thing going, um, but uh, really neat, really neat plant, fine texture. Uh, I trim it back now and then it just takes off and by mid June, it blooms through October. So how are we doing Marianne? Do you have other more questions? Are we good? Yeah, I think you're doing good. I haven't got really any more questions. Oh, it says, um, what do you think of miracle Grow?" And then another person had a comment, Pat, and she said that there's a product called Repels All that she uses to repel deer and rabbit. And she said it works pretty good, but you have to reapply it after it rains. And we'd like your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, so here's the deer questions. Here's the... Um, um, with the repels all yeah it's a great one um um uh, all of them i think as long as you're kind of consistent with take putting stuff down for them um i use um i i actually use a bunch of different stuff but like i use a deer scram which is a granular um we use that and we put it down now because a lot of times the deer will be like taking their paws and they'll be like scruffing the soil and stuff and that actually kind of helps them smell a little bit that the other thing is deer scram has a nice fragrance it kind of smells like cinnamony i will not tell anybody to use liquid fence because that stuff is the most horrible smell you could ever smell um but kind of the the key is to kind of keep switching off and use something else um i use deer off which is a um spray a liquid spray so that's, that's a, a, so I'll kind of alternate those or if I've got something, you know, like I've got ewes and they're coming through every, because deer are heat creatures of habit. And what you want to do is try to get them moving in another direction and get them going someplace else. So, you know, once they don't like what you're, they're smelling, hopefully they go up to your neighbors and they don't bother <laughs> Well, you know, that's, that's really about it. Marianne, what was the first question? Um, so what do you think of miracle Grow? Oh, miracle Grow. And okay. uh, along with that, um, what is the best time to apply fertilizer for carpet roses? Oh, carpet roses. Okay. Um, carpet roses, you could, um, you could do it right now. Um, and you could use, um, miracle Grow is a quick, fast acting water soluble ones. So that's different. Carpet roses, you could put like a rose tone down. You could do holly tone because the thing is, I know I'm, I might sound, this is too simplistic and you're like, oh really, you know, you don't, you're not original to buy anything else. But the fact of the matter is that where we live, the soil pH is like roughly usually around 7.8 to 8.2. We want to be like 6.5 to seven. So if you use something like a holly tone, it's a slow release organic matter made here in the United States, made in Michigan. Um, and so 
it's a good plant for that. It's a local um, distributor um, and it helps to keep acidifying the soil, to keep it lower, which is what all the plants want. Your roses, everything do. Uh, but you can do like a plant tone, a rose tone. Um, you know, you can do those type, but I would do the roses are heavy. Roses are heavy feeders. So are daylilies. There's a lot of uh, peonies are a heavy feeder. Um, so, but roses, you can do them now. You could actually do, you could do roses now. What is this? May, mid, mid May. You could do them now and then you can do a Memorial Day or, well, you could do Memorial Day, um, 4th of July. And then Labor Day would be the absolute last time because you want them actually slowing down. Um, and you know, you, you don't want them giving new spurts when it's starting to cool off. So at least twice, and maybe even three times if they're not. Roses had a bad year last year. Everybody who had problems with roses, don't take it personal. Um, every place I went, didn't matter if I was born, Lake Orion, North, South, Waterford, Water, roses had a bad year last year, so don't take it personal and um, just keep, you know, doing the feeding with them. But like I say, not heavy, but um, at least two, twice and maybe three times because they're a perennial. miracle Grow is fine. Um, I like using Peter's because it's, um, well, I'm sorry, Peter's now is Jack's, Jack's Classic. I like using Jack's because Jack's is another one that's local um, and around here. And I like the formula better on Jack's. So I use Jack's Classic or Jack's Petunia feed of the two that I use. And, um, you know, you can get them at, I think you can even, I think you can even get them at Menards. I'm not sure about that. I, I get it at Telly's. Um, another place that's awesome to go if you have issues with stuff you don't know what's going on with your garden and you need some help. Uncle Luke's, um, Dale at, um, at uh, what is it? Um, he's on um, South Bullet. He's on um, Crooks just south. Not, is it Crooks? No, Livernoy. Livernoy just south of South Boulevard. Um, and talk to Dale over at Uncle Luke's. He will help you out with any fertilizer and soil issues. He's awesome that way. So that'll help you out too. Right. Well, Sue, um, this was a question I had too, but thanks, Linda, for bringing it up. Um, what do you mean by heavy feeder? Heavy feeders? Okay, just means that, that, you know, like some, you don't really even have to fertilize them at all, but others, they, you really notice, like, especially if you notice, like, the greens will, the leaves will start getting lighter in color. Um, my plants here are, um, they could be darker green than they are. Um, but they need they they need more fertilizer than than none. So you want to like like roses or peonies or stuff. I supplement them like I get bumper crop, um, which is um, which is kind of like a compost. I get it over at Telly's. I know I'm pushing Telly's, but that's just because they're nice people. It's not like you know I, I don't have stock in Telly's. Um, but bump, bumper crop is like a nice one that you would just take some out of the bag. And it's got a lot of great ingredients in it. And you just take a couple handfuls and spread it around the base of the plant. And then that's a compost that kind of seeps slowly into the soil. So it's like you're giving it a slow release fertilizer throughout the summer. Um, it's kind of like, like um, okay, like compost and like a slow release fertilizer, like um, the holly tones and plant tones. Those would be like, say, if you're having like a protein shake. You know, it's kind of like slow release and it gets you to everything. But then if you need like a quick zap, like a red ball, then go ahead and use the miracle Grow to get some, you know, quick, quick fertilizer to the plant real, you know, but you're telling, you can tell most of it, you're analyzing the plants by not only the flowers that are produced, but also the color of the leaves. When the color of the leaves are getting paler in color, you know, it's time for, because you're watering so much. And don't forget, you remember I was talking about pH. I'm going to throw one more thing. I'm sorry, there's so much here, but it just goes in and out all the time. <laughs> but the pH of your soil, you assume that when you turn on that hose, the pH of your soil is going to be fine. A lot of times the pH in your soil is high sevens or eight. So you are watering and you are raising the pH, but the plant takes in nutrients when the pH is lower. 
So that's why you're supplementing it with like a holly tone that helps keep that pH down. And that's also counteracting uh, the higher pH that's coming out of the hose and everything else. So kind of in a nutshell and kind of quick, but um, so miracle Grow is a quick release one, but if I had my druthers, I would go Jack's Classic. Okay, well, I have uh, two more questions for you, and then sure. uh, we can um, get ready to um, close it up. Yep, I got close it up if you are. So I, got a, Cheryl, I got a bunch more. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Cheryl had a uh, question, and she wants to know Have you ever tried plant skid for deer? Plant skid? Yeah, plant skid is um, plant skid is that's for deer. Um, the only thing with plant skid is that um, when you spray it on, it's red. And it and it is because it's got like a blood type ingredient to it. Um, so you're better off, I found, putting plant skid like in um it's it's a great you can put it in like like stockings or netting or something and then hanging it around. Um, but when you split spray it on things, you will get kind of like a reddish dye for mm. uh, I don't want to say real red, but it's kind of like that for a little bit. So I kind of I kind of avoid it. I like using the deer's tram, the granular better, but but it's good to switch up too. Okay. And then Bo has a quick question. Uh, he says, he or she, I'm sorry, um, says, our for Cynthia barely ever has the yellow spring flowers. What can we use on it? You don't have to, it, I, it might, for Cynthia, most of the time, it's if you pruned at the wrong time of the year. If you're pruning, it flowers now. So when it's done flowering, if you're going to prune it, I would go down to the base, cut out some of the thickest stems at the base so that you're always renew, rejuvenating that plant. Just remember with shrubs, flowering shrubs, all flowering shrubs always flower best on young wood, on young wood. So the thicker and older those that wood gets, those stems get, the less flowers. So you go into the base and you, I take a reciprocating saw. I go down there and I just cut out the thickest ones at the base and then the youngest ones will give you the most flowers. But the key is, say if it gets done flowering on um, June 1st, you have until July 1st to prune that plant. After that, it's setting flower buds for next year. So that, that could be, or if it's in too much shade, it might be not be blooming because of that. Or if it's like right next to a the gutter or something where there's a lot of water washing out sometimes that affects the amount of flour too so okay we'll get, back, we'll get back to um these guys and i gotta my mouse woke had to wake up um how many more slides do you have sue um i've got i got i've got a i've got a bunch i've probably got about 15 i guess okay well if you guys have time um, yeah, we stay with us and continue. And if you don't um, have a good week, uh, look on OPC website and Facebook for all the other events coming up. Sue's going to be back in two weeks. No, next week. Next week. With uh, Shady Characters. That's on May 18th. So I just want to get out there uh, and let you know about that. Now we'll let Sue finish up. And thank you, everybody, for spending this time with us today. Okay, well, they. I, I'm sorry. I thought we had till 11:30, so I was thinking you have as much time as you need, hon. Okay, all right. So, okay, well, we'll have fun then. <laughs> um, okay, so this is dragon wing begonia, another annual, awesome, awesome plant. Um, I'll go a little bit quicker with these, but dragon wing is the pink one that hangs down. Um, great, great plant for flowers all summer. You want something reliable in your hanging baskets or whatever. Um, mostly comes just in the red or the pink. I think sometimes white as well. But dragon wing is a strong one. So very, very good one that way. Um, Corydalus is going to be a long bloomer. Um, kind of ubiquitous, spreads throughout the garden, seeds all over the place. Um, so um, there are different varieties out there. And most of them all are kind of seedy. Um, so if you need a shady ground cover like say for like close to like a blue spruce or something like that on the edge or under pines and let it spread on its own and it'll probably take off and and give you some color that way um the geranium rose roseanne you know is a big hit everybody was using geranium roseanne 
It lasts for a long time. This is a perennial. This is perennial geranium. There is also a newer variety that's called Azure Rust. It's A-Z-U-R-E, Rust, Rush, R-U-S-H, I'm sorry. And um, that's a sport of Roseanne. It's a little bit smaller, um, but it blooms from June to October. Again, give it like a holly tone or something so that it has some, some fertilizer. Um, and it's a great one for that. So that's the geranium roseanne. Um, and on the last page we got here, lantanas, there's the butterflies. Um, that's the American Painted Lady on that. Um, lantanas, they're, they're in ditches in Florida. So they can toler the, tolerate the heat. They can tolerate the sun. Um, they come in a lot of different colors. This is ham and eggs. There's a lot of, it's called ham and eggs also. All parts of the plants are poisonous, so don't go chewing it or eating it. Um, we've got them, we've got them on the ground. We've got them in hanging baskets. Really nobody ever eats the plant that I've seen, but just want you to know that. Um, nice full plant and tons of butterflies. So great one. Um, these are just a couple of different colors. Little Lucky is one. I got those like at Eckert's. Every place, every place has them, so um, good one that way. Uh, cats meow. The cat mint is really getting to be very, very popular. A lot of people are using cat mint. Um, this one is called cats meow. There is also one that's called cats pajamas. That's the newest variety out there. That's even stronger than cats meow. Um, there's Persian shield. Per, Persian. There's Persian. Uh, crap, I can't, it's Persian something. I'll think of it in a second. Um, that's a good one. Don't get Kit Kat. Kit Kat is not that great, um, but these guys bloom all summer. Um, Kit's Meow is much more compact, strong stems. Deer don't bother it. Um, so it's kind of like one of those really good ones. Plant it, let it go, don't worry. Deer will just walk right by it and you've got good blue flowers for the summer. <laughs> The one on the, okay, these are called the Sun Patients. Um, and as you can see, um, Sue who works with me, that's her on the left there, but all you see is her legs holding up the plant. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a, I, I love that picture, I gotta always show that. But look how big that plant is. That shows you how big one Sun Patients gets in a season. That's in the ground. On the right, we've got them in pots along the, sh um, this isn't a porch, faces west. We went through, I don't know, I can't tell you how many plants trying to find plants that tolerated that area from the blinding sun coming in through it. Works awesome. Um, sun patients, you can get it, corals, pinks, reds. Um, uh, I got it at one place you can go um, besides, I get them at Telly's, but another place you can go is called Brohl's, B-R-O-H-L-S. Um, cool place to go. Go to check stuff out. It's over on 25 mile. I think it's east of Romeo Plank. Could be 26 mile, but I think it's 25 mile. But some patients, they have them over there too. Um, but yeah, Brawls think Coles with a BR instead of a K. <laughs> it's not, that helps you on that one. But um, some patients are a great one. Um, the king of, king of Petunias. This is um, Vista Bubblegum. When you plant this one, make sure that you give it two feet at least. Um, it will eat up other petunias in a pot. Um, so it, it is very happy, goes very well. There is a fuchsia version of this. This is Vista bubblegum, but there's, there's a Vista fuchsia and there's also kind of a white one that's called silverberry. All really good. This is an annual. Um, if you ever go to the village in Rochester at Adams and Walton, I, he had those hanging in his baskets last year. Um, they also had it um, over in Warren. They had it hanging down. Oh my gosh, I just looked outside and it's snowing again. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> we, that's why we're looking at flowers right here. Don't look out the window. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, and the last set is the ones that are over two feet. There's a ton of butterfly bushes out there. I put Queen of Hearts in because this is a picture I took in uh, September. It is still growing so strong. We didn't deadhead it. The flowers are still on there, but they're dying back. 
Um, there, there are a lot of really, butterfly bush can be called invasive, um, but most of them I think are pretty darn decent and I love them for bringing all the, the flowers in. If you wanna try a huge one, there is a new one out that I've got at a couple places I planted last year and I've been very happy so far, but it's called Grand Cascade. That one gets seven feet. Huge, huge flowers. The flowers got to be like even farther, as big as you can. Um, huge plant. So there are, Pugster is one that's a variety that's more of a seedless type one. So it's going to hold on. It's not going to spread as much. So butterfly bushes and butterflies, you got to have them. Um, Cosmos for butterflies as well. Very, very fine texture. The only thing is, I don't know if I would, I guess I would put this in medium low um, maintenance because you do have to kind of, I deadhead the flowers off of it, like maybe once, once or twice. So, um, so that's, that's a good one. My, my little puppy just came up to say hi to everybody. She, she's like, I can't take it. You've been, you've been away for too long. <laughs> so that was Cosmos. Um, purple cone flower, somebody asked a question about native plants. The purple cone flower is a native that butterflies um, love. Um, there's different, this is called, these are native vars, so it's native cultivars. So they're the varieties that have, that are spin off of that. Um, and Cheyenne Spirit, I love, Cheyenne Spirit is a cool one. It's got a bunch of different colors to it. Pinks, oranges, kind of like that. It's, it's different variations. The powwow wildberry, um, that was one that I first saw up at, um, up in Frankenmuth. And that one has, I know this color doesn't look the best, but it's got a true pink purple color to it. So it's like a deeper, some of it, like Magnus was one that kind of bleached out after a while. This, this color in powwow wildberry does not bleach out. So it's a, it's a good one. And Cheyenne Spirit, if you want to, variety of different colors. Um, that's a great one too. These guys are deer resistant. Um, and so, oh, and the newer series also is the whole Sombrero series. And the Sombrero series have like hot salsa. They got like a dark red. They've got a bright yellow. Now I just used them last year. So they were great last year, but I kind of hesitate. I'm ever talking about them until I know for sure, you know, how many are, um, you know, that, uh, how, how it's going after a couple of years, but so far it shows a lot of crap. So, um, gar now you guys, I think maybe most of you, I didn't put it in the intro, but we also install landscape lighting. Um, and we, I love it. We've put, we've been putting landscape lighting in for 27 years. And, um, and so, uh, but this whirling butterflies is just an awesome one just to kind of softly, light up like have it by like a, an up light and at night it just floats like a white butterfly in your garden and so if you want to add like extra senses and everything to the garden and make it a little bit even more magical at night these these are uh, the gara g-a-u-r-a and whirling butterflies they're siskiyou pink there's mostly just pinks and white but in i'm going to call it an annual it is a perennial, but sometimes it just gives so much of itself that it's it it um, the next year it might not come back. But um, just because it blooms so long, but um, I've had it in gardens for three and five years, and then I've had it sometimes die out too. So, um, but it's it's definitely one worth using. So, and then a showstopper that's a workhorse in the garden is mandevillas. Um, that's you see it it's like a vine um there's diplodinias as well and they're just and um one is more of a, a thicker runner and the other is more of a bushier plant um but the one on the bottom is like red riding hood there's reds pinks and white um all of them the leaves are clean shiny no bug issues i really everything i've shown you has not had insect issues or things like that or disease issues and this is definitely, like I said, these are winning plants. These are the ones I'm happy with. So um, very cool plant. You got to have a mandevilla. We, we put them in one client's house. She's got a colonial. And we had four hanging baskets across the, across the front of the um, colonial. And 
and we had them hanging and then I put um, fish line um, across the top and then I trained them to grow along the fish line so she had red and red flowers going all the way across the top of her or right underneath the roof um, by her porch so it was like an extra added bonus of course you can do that with any vine or a lot of vines are a lot of fun that way fragrance four o'clocks four o'clock in the afternoon that's when they open up and they just bloom you can buy them by seeds um, you can do them that way um, just a really cool plant partial shade they'll do they they can get bushy they can get about three to four feet um, but a great plant that way so good one with diff lots of different colors and this woodland tobacco is the the one across the back that's in the white flowers that are hanging down woodland tobacco is nicotiana it can get four feet um, I had it in my gardens in the in my front yard and uh, a couple years ago and we would go for a walk and before we would come around the corner to see our house we could smell it because of the fragrance especially in evening that the the, the Nicotianas give off so that only the lonely is just one kind of woodland tobacco there's a lot of different ones it's just um, it's a white flowers the leaves are poisonous um, so you need to know that but um, it's an awesome fragrance so Great, great, great plant to try. And if bigger coarse textured leaves, you want to try something fun, it's a good one to try. Um, just two left here. So this is balloon flower. This has got a tap root. So that means when wherever you decide to plant it, it's going to stay there. It's like a carrot type root. So it just keeps going down and it's solid. It's not like you could dig it up and move it. You can try, but you probably won't be very successful with it. Um, they the 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 flowers start out as balloons they look like balloons and then they burst open and it's mostly in blue they have one like in a shell pink um but i think the blue is the stronger variety i've had my very long lived um i've had one for over 20 years and very very happy so cool plant they have shorter varieties as well and then the last one i want to show you is called hot lips hot lips is the red and white one there um, it's a salvia, deer don't touch salvia. So th this is an annual. Um, as, the, as it heats up, the flowers get more red and less white. And then um, as the days become shorter, you get more white and less um, red. So it's kind of a cool plant that way. Um, it'll, get, it'll get about two and a half feet by two and a half. It'll get to be a nice bushy, um, plant. I have planted it for people that say, oh, I want something. I don't know what I want. And let's try this. And doesn't need a lot of fertilizer, just water regularly. Um, but a really, really, it's a cool accent. Uh, butterfly, or hummingbirds love it. Hummingbirds will go to it as well. Black and blue salvia, they'll go to that as well. So um, I think that's, yeah, that's my, um, that's the one of the pages that we Put together and stuff there um, just showing the night lighting and all the different that and the, that top left corner I didn't talk to you about that one but that top left corner is angels trumpet the yellow flowers that's what's behind me right now these I store them in the basement in the winter time and um, there's uh, see if they, you can see wait a minute, how am I doing that they're over there there's I got like four of them going um, and I put them in the basement and then in the, in the spring, I bring them back up and I fertilize them, but they can't go out yet. Too cold. <laughs> they're, they're not going, they're not happy, but oh my God, at eight o'clock, you go outside and the fragrance is incredible. It's absolutely fantastic. If you buy one angel's trumpet, um, you're just going to love it. I bring them in, you know, you don't have to. Um, but I just store them in the basement, don't do much. And then in the spring, bring them back out. So. Very, very cool. If you guys are interested in night lighting or anything, um, you can always check me at mycreativescapes.com. I gotta tell you, I thought about that this morning. I haven't been on there. I gotta go on there and update the classes. So ignore it if some part, but the pictures and everything else are really, really cool. So um, I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm, I'm really loving this. Um, and um, you know, I hope to see everybody again. I think we're gonna do two more classes and then I'm going to get too slammed to do classes. So then we'll probably 
pick back up in the fall, but I think I'd kind of still rather see you in the classroom because it's so much fun. It's kind of weird being just sitting here and not well, moving. Well, Sue, we really enjoyed you. You are amazing. And I'm getting, everybody is just sending me all kinds of messages telling me how wonderful you are and how great this was. So thank you so much. Oh, um, good. We'll great. Be back next week. And if I can talk her into one next month, maybe. <laughs> Um, we have a couple more questions. Do you mind? Sure. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So, and I want to let um, Anne know that I sent you uh, the document and I want everybody to know that I have taped this. Um, so if you miss the beginning, let me know and I'll send you a link. Um, Okay, so that was from Anne. Anne, uh, I have the link for you and I sent you the document. Okay, and Deborah, yes, it's recorded. I can get you the link. Um, okay, same. Okay, Deborah. All right, I know I had some questions. Okay, any suggestion for a fungus resistant zinnia? Yeah, the ones that I showed you. Are okay, the, you covered that. The, the Zahara and the um, profusion. Now, the, the ones that get the fungus more are the ones that have the bigger ball flowers to them. Those are the ones that are, now they're getting a lot more disease resistant ones, but the ones that I showed you never have any issues at all. So go with the Zaharas or the profusions or ones like that. I would just say the only one I was disappointed in all of those, which I know I already said, was the, but was the, the white one was that flower was not as much of a good performer as the yellow or the orange or the red. And the salmon wasn't a <laughs> performer either. So, yeah. I have one more question. Um, is, does lake water um, help with the pH level versus from a hose, you um, know, from like a city well? Okay. It's fine because, because it's not, yeah, because it's not, you know, it is more of a, a, probably a neutral. Still would be cool to, to see if you could just put a pH, like a pool kit, test kit in there and see what your pH is. But yeah, lake, lake water is always better because it's got some more nutrients in it than, than regular hose water does. Yeah. Right. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so I'm just going to write down a couple people. You know what? I'm going to tell you, in the email with the invitation is my email. If you need the handout or if you want the link to the video, just email me because then I won't have to go back through all these chats because um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Sue, this was fantastic. Does anybody else have any questions? You can uh, unmute, you, I'll unmute everybody. Oh my. There we go. <laughs> everybody uh, unmuted. If you have any questions for Sue. What is your email no. address? My email address? Yes, Marianne. Um, you could, you Mine? could get, I'll oh, type it right say here. Lake water is, is better than hose water. Yes. Lake water is better than hose water. Stop Nutrients. Yeah. She's got, yeah. She's in it and everything else. That's what I always thought. It was yeah, nice to so get her. Fine. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. I'd like to get the tape and uh, I need Mary I mean, a little, email. A couple of things. Um, yeah, there was. Okay, I just put my email address up on the chat. So copy that down. I need to get a bag of compost oh. and mix into the pots. Can you put it back? Plant in the pots. Honey, uh, the, Can they I? said. Yeah, because. Um, and she said, Jake's classic is better than Miracle Grow. Okay. Miracle Grow. Jack's classic. I mean, uh, well, yep. there's something to keep yeah. in the future. Miracle Grow, she said, is, it, I mean, it's the type of thing you need a, a shot in the arm. It, yeah. So it's okay. <laughs> I mean, All right. Well, let me, you know what? Jake's classic. You Jack's. Said, she Jack's. said she thought you could get it at Uncle Luke's. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Jack's, Jack's classic, you can get it on the loop, you can get it at Tully's. Um, let me just add one thing. If you're doing... Jack's, that's maybe it. Mute everybody. Can you mute, mute everybody for a second? Yep. Um, maybe if you're getting... Hang on. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, sorry, Sue. You were oh, muted, that's okay. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, 
yeah, just my family could do that. <laughs> um, if you're getting, if you're putting pots together, um, you can add like that bumper crop that I was talking about that you get at Telly's. Um, if, or there's a couple other places, you could Google it to find out where else. But I, I don't use that. Like I will just use like um, maybe a couple handfuls of that. And then I use a lightweight medium and I mix the two together. Um, and if you're you if you had a big pots from last year, um, you you don't have to take all the soil out, but take out a lot of the soil, um, and then freshen it with new stuff with the compost and a lightweight mix. I get the stuff. My personal thing is we use um, maybe not even one third bumper crop, and then we also use over at Telly's. They've got a light. Their lightweight medium is called LC One. Um, LC1. Other places have a different, but it's a lightweight medium that doesn't have anything else in it. So I mix the two together and then I add holly tone in there at that time and then I plant my plants, water, and that's it. And then like the next week I will go back and I'll use like a Jack's Classic and when the soil, when the, the temps warm up and the plants get going, that's when I start using the Jack's Classic at that point. So, um, so it would bumper crop would just be a couple handfuls, and the of course depending on the size of the pot, and the rest would be like a lightweight soil. So I hope that helps. All right, that's fantastic. Well, you, you were a superstar, and we <laughs> sure do appreciate you. You don't know how much this was well, very informative, and I will end the recording now so that I can um, send the link to everybody because they're super excited.